Hey guys, it's Aaron. Later on this week, we got a video coming up from our Basecamp 2019 with Matt Chambers talking about animation in SketchUp. He talks about a bunch of cool things, some extensions, uh, some ways to use the native tools to animate. But one of the things I really thought was cool is he did this thing where he animated a slice of a model. So he just took a, a chunk of a model, um, nested some sections, we've, which we've looked at in other skill builders, but he actually animated and made that section walk through the model. It was pretty cool, and I played around doing it, and I wanted to show that as kind of a sneak peek to some of the cool stuff that Matt will show in his video. So let's go ahead and hop right in. So the model I'm going to work with is a submarine. It's a file I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. It is a cool model, and it has some rooms on the inside, some submarine rooms. I don't know what they do or what they're for, but they're on the inside, and it makes for a cool section slice animating through here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating the first section. We're going to create a scene out of that, and then we'll create a second section, and then we'll actually come in and create the slices as well. So bear with me as we run through this. Um, and uh, you'll kind of get an idea for the kind of thing that Matt shows in his video. So first thing I want to do is, as I create these two sections, I'm going to create one facing backwards towards the sub and one facing frontwards, and they're going to create a slice. What I want to make sure is the slice I create here in the front is the same as the slice I create in the back, so the as it animates, the slice stays the same size. So to do that, I'm going to create some reference uh, geometry, and I'm going to do that just creating a small square. This is a big model, so I'm going to say a 20 foot by 20 foot square, and I'll just pull that up another, well, let's say 20 foot. Get a cube. And now I'm going to take that and use the move command along with the modifier key, option on Mac, control on Windows, and I'm going to make a second cube down there. These aren't important. I don't have to group them, put them on a special layer, or anything. They're just there for reference as I put in my planes. So I'm going to start by putting in the first section plane. I'm going to grab the section plane tool. We'll call this one. That's fine. And I'm going to place it on the front of this box. I'm just going to click there. And that's, that's all I need to do. That's it. That's step number one. Um, right now, I want to finish this section, this slice. So I got the cut in the front. Now I want to make a cut on the back as well. And to do that, I want to put it in the group with this submarine. So my geometry is already grouped. So I'm going to double click to enter that group. And I'm going to place a second section plane. And I'm going to place that on the back of this cube right here. And there we go. We have our first section cut. So remember, if I'm on the outside, I can only activate one plane at a time. I can only pick to have my, my plane number one visible at that point. So you can see that makes a very cool little section and see inside there. Um, so that's good. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save that as my first scene. When I go to create my scene, this is something else that Matt touches on when he talks about animation inside of SketchUp, is being selective about what you save into your scenes. I don't need to save all this other stuff. The only thing I really want to animate are my section planes. I want my views, my camera, uh, lighting, whatever else to be independent of the actual scene. So all I want to save with this is my section plane. So I'm going to say plus, create that scene, and I will then have my scene number one. So scene one is this section. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually deactivate both these scenes. And I can do this using the outliner. If I scroll all the way to the bottom of the outline, so I have my, my first group and then my sections. So I'm just going to right click and say deactivate that cut. And unfortunately, this will be in here with all my other subgroups inside of that first one. But there it is. It's at the bottom, section two. And I can deactivate that cut as well. I could have double clicked in and selected, but it's uh, easier for me to use Outliner because everything I need is in one spot. I like using Outliner. All right, so with that, I'm going to go put my second set of planes in. Again, Section Plane Tool. This will be Section Plane number three on the front of this box. And now, just like I did before, I'm going to double-click into the group, spin around, add my second 
section plane and I get my new slice. So what I can do now is save this as another scene. So again, with just the active section planes visible, I'm going to hit plus, and that's going to give me that scene two. So now, if I click on scene one, it's going to animate back between those two sections. I went a little far. The rooms actually end right about here, but I went all the way to the back of the sub. But it's still cool. You still get the idea. Um, I'm going to go to View, Animation, Settings, and maybe drag this out a little bit. We'll say we'll, we'll spend about five seconds on it. That way when I hit this, see it actually animates through there. Something kind of cool I can do now too, is I have all these section planes visible and, and everything. Um, I might not want to see all of them. I can get rid of these boxes right now. I can select and delete those. And jump back to my scene number one. And there's my other box. I can get rid of that. Whoops. I can get rid of that. And I don't actually need these section cuts to be visible. So one of the things I can do is I can come up here, turn off section planes, and you'll notice they don't come back when I switch to my scenes because my scene is only concerned with my section planes. That means I can run this same animation from any view I want because that's all I saved with my scene. So, as Matt points out in his video, he goes, I don't know why you necessarily have to do this, but it is a cool looking animation and I agree with him. I think it's a neat way to use the existing tools inside of SketchUp to create something that maybe a lot of people don't expect or wouldn't know how to create. But now you've had a sneak peek, come back on Friday, watch Matt's video because this is just the tip of the iceberg. He throws out a bunch of great information on making animations and if you do any kind of animation inside of SketchUp, it's going to be worth something worth seeing. So hope you like that. If so, give us a like. If you want to see more videos like this or get notified when Matt's video comes out, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. If you have some ideas for other things that would make good skill builder videos, leave those in the comments below. I like making these videos, but like it a lot more when there's something that you want to see. Thank you.